Imagine a life filled with peace and purpose, waking up each day with clarity, knowing that your actions align with a higher calling, navigating life's challenges with wisdom, serenity, and unwavering faith. Now, ask yourself, what would it take to achieve this? How can you cultivate the best version of yourself? How can you live a life that not only brings you closer to Allah, but also inspires those around you? As the great Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once wisely shared, the best among you are those who have the best manners and character. This timeless wisdom is the foundation of a fulfilling and righteous life. Today, we're diving into eight golden pieces of advice from the Prophet Muhammad that can help you transform your life and character. Stay with us as we explore these profound teachings that can guide you on the path to true success. Stay away from three things. One, bad deeds. Avoid actions that harm your spiritual and social well-being. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, warned against sinful behavior that distances us from Allah. Reflect on your actions and strive to live according to Islamic values. 2. Backbiting. Backbiting is like eating the flesh of your dead brother, as mentioned in the Quran. It destroys trust and spreads negativity. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us to speak good or stay silent. Choose words wisely and avoid harmful gossip. 3. Jealousy. Jealousy eats away at our peace and gratitude. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, advised us to avoid jealousy and focus on our blessings. Wish well for others and focus on what you have. By avoiding these three harmful habits, we can maintain a pure heart and build a community based on love and respect. Control three things. 1. Anger. Anger can lead to hurtful actions. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized controlling anger by seeking refuge in Allah and practicing patience. A strong person is one who controls their temper. 2. Tongue. Our words can build or break relationships. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us to speak only what is good and beneficial, Think before speaking. Is it true? Necessary. Kind. 3. Desires. Nafs. Unchecked desires can lead us astray. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, urged us to master our nafs by resisting temptations and striving for what pleases Allah. Controlling our anger, words and desires leads to personal growth and stronger faith. Have three things in you. 1. Good deeds, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, encouraged regular acts of kindness and charity. Whether it's helping someone or simply smiling, good deeds bring us closer to Allah. 2. Honesty. Honesty builds trust and integrity. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was known as al amin the trustworthy, and taught us to always be truthful. 3. Faith, Iman. Faith is our guiding light. Nurture it through prayer, reading the Quran, and reflecting on Allah's signs in your life. Good deeds, honesty, and faith are the foundations of a righteous life. Nurture these qualities within yourself. Keep three things pure. 1. Body, cleanliness, is part of faith. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, taught us to keep our bodies clean and healthy through regular ablution and hygiene. 2. Clothes, wear clean and modest clothing as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, recommended. Our appearance reflects our inner state. 3. Thoughts. Keep your mind free from negative thoughts like envy or hatred. Focus on positive and righteous thinking that aligns with Islamic teachings. Purity in body, clothing and thoughts reflects both our inner and outer states and our commitment to pleasing Allah. Respect three people. 1. Parents, the Prophet Muhammad,
peace be upon him, stressed honoring our parents with kindness and patience. Serving them is a way to earn Allah's blessings. 2. Teachers, respect those who impart knowledge. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us to value our teachers for guiding us to wisdom. 3. Elderly, respect and care for the elderly as they hold wisdom and experience. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized their importance in society. Respecting our parents, teachers and the elderly is a reflection of our values and earns us both worldly respect and divine reward. Free yourself from three things. 1. Arrogance. Arrogance is a harmful and destructive trait that the Prophet Muhammad Muhammad, peace be upon him, strongly warned against in his teachings. It is a form of pride where a person feels overly confident in their own abilities, achievements or qualities, leading them to look down upon others. Arrogance often manifests as a sense of superiority, where an individual believes they are better than others because of their wealth, knowledge, social status, or even their level of religious devotion. This attitude not only damages one's character, but also creates barriers between them and Allah. Arrogance distorts a person's view of themselves and their place in the world. It causes them to become blind to their own faults, weaknesses and mistakes. When someone is arrogant, they often ignore constructive criticism and become defensive when faced with feedback. This makes them less open to advice, guidance or personal growth, hindering their ability to improve themselves. Moreover, arrogance can lead to conflicts in relationships as it prevents a person from seeing others as equals and understanding their perspectives. This can cause division and resentment within families, communities and societies. In Islam, humility is considered a fundamental virtue. Humility involves recognizing that all our talents, abilities and successes are blessings from Allah and not solely the result of our own efforts. It means understanding that everything we have is granted by the grace of Allah and can be taken away at any time. A humble person acknowledges their dependence on Allah's mercy and guidance and does not view themselves as superior to others. Humility also encourages us to appreciate the strengths and qualities of others without feeling threatened or envious. It fosters gratitude for what we have, as well as empathy and kindness towards others, as we recognize that everyone is equal in the sight of Allah, regardless of their worldly status. The Quran and Hadith provide numerous examples that illustrate the dangers of arrogance and the virtues of humility. For instance, the story of Iblis, Satan in the Quran, highlights how arrogance led to his downfall. Despite being a devout worshipper of Allah, Iblis's arrogance in refusing to bow to Adam, peace be upon him, as commanded by Allah, led to his expulsion from paradise. This story serves as a powerful reminder that arrogance can lead to self-destruction and eternal loss. On the other hand, the Prophet Muhammad Muhammad, peace be upon him, is described as the epitome of humility. Despite being the final messenger and having a high status among people, he lived a simple life, treated others with kindness and respect, and never considered himself superior to anyone. Arrogance also causes one to become self-centered, thinking only of their own needs and desires, while neglecting the feelings and rights of others. This self-centeredness can lead to social isolation as people naturally avoid those who make them feel inferior or undervalued. Furthermore, arrogance can prevent one from asking for help when needed, as they may believe it is a sign of weakness. This refusal to seek assistance can lead to greater struggles and missed opportunities for personal and spiritual growth. A humble person readily seeks knowledge, advice and support from others, understanding that everyone has something valuable to offer. They are also more likely to forgive others, recognizing their own imperfections and need for forgiveness. Humility cultivates a spirit of cooperation and unity within communities, 
as it encourages us to value each person's contribution and to work together toward common goals. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, exemplified this in his interactions, always listening to others, valuing their input, and never considering any task beneath him. By freeing ourselves from arrogance, we create space for wisdom and self-awareness to grow. We become more open to learning from others, acknowledging our mistakes and making positive changes. This attitude allows us to build better, more meaningful relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. When we let go of arrogance, we can draw closer to Allah as He loves those who are humble. A humble heart is more receptive to divine guidance, more aware of its own need for Allah's mercy, and more connected to the community around it. Humility is key to developing a sincere relationship with Allah. It involves surrendering our ego and acknowledging that we are His servants, in need of His mercy and guidance every step of the way. A humble heart prays earnestly, seeks forgiveness sincerely, and remains grateful in all circumstances. By embracing humility and rejecting arrogance, we align ourselves with the values of Islam, ensuring success not just in this world, but also in the hereafter. 2. Cheating Cheating is strongly condemned in Islam and is considered a major sin that undermines trust and integrity within a society. Cheating can take many forms lying, deceiving, stealing, manipulating, or breaking promises. It can occur in various aspects of life, such as business, education, personal relationships, and even religious practices. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized the importance of honesty and fairness in all dealings, as these are core values that form the foundation of a righteous and just society. When a person engages in cheating, they not only harm others, but also corrupt their own character and spiritual state. The Quran explicitly forbids cheating and dishonesty. For example, in Surah Al-Mutafifin, Allah warns those who give less in measure and weight to others, but demand full measure for themselves, highlighting the sinfulness of such behavior. This verse teaches that cheating, whether in trade, business, or any other dealings is deeply unjust and will be held accountable by Allah. A society where cheating is common becomes filled with distrust, resentment and injustice. People feel wronged and betrayed, which can lead to conflict, hatred and division. Therefore, cheating is not only a personal sin, but also a threat to the harmony and well-being of the entire community. Being truthful and trustworthy is an essential quality of a believer. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, He who cheats is not one of us. This strong statement shows the gravity of cheating in Islam and the importance of being honest and straightforward. Trustworthiness is not just about telling the truth, but also about being fair, transparent and sincere in all aspects of life. A Muslim should strive to be reliable and dependable so that people feel safe and secure in their presence. This builds strong bonds of trust, which are the foundation of healthy relationships, whether in family, business or friendship. Cheating may seem like a shortcut to gain material benefits or avoid difficulties, but it ultimately leads to spiritual and moral decay. In the short term, a person may gain some profit, advantage, or temporary relief through dishonest means. But in the long run, it leads to a loss of baraka, blessing, in their wealth, relationships, and life. Cheating damages a person's reputation, and once trust is broken, it is very difficult to rebuild. People who are known to cheat or deceive are often isolated and excluded from the community as others no longer feel safe interacting with them. Furthermore, cheating is a betrayal of Allah's trust as He has commanded us to be honest and just in all our dealings. On a deeper level, cheating can also weaken one's relationship with Allah. 
When a person cheats, they are essentially choosing worldly gains over divine guidance, showing a lack of faith and trust in Allah's provision. True believers understand that all sustenance comes from Allah and that one does not need to resort to dishonest means to achieve success or happiness. By avoiding cheating and remaining honest, even when it is difficult, a person demonstrates their reliance on Allah and their commitment to living a life that pleases Him. Islam encourages believers to seek lawful, halal, means of earning and to be content with what they have. Contentment, kana'a, is a beautiful quality that prevents one from feeling the need to cheat or deceive for more. It teaches us to be satisfied with what Allah has provided, knowing that He knows what is best for us. When a person has true faith in Allah's wisdom and justice, they do not feel the need to engage in cheating or dishonesty to achieve their goals. Islam teaches us the value of repentance and making amends. If someone has cheated in the past, they are encouraged to sincerely repent, seek forgiveness from those they have wronged, and make efforts to restore any losses caused by their actions. This process not only cleanses the soul, but also helps in rebuilding trust and repairing damaged relationships. True repentance involves a firm commitment to never return to such behavior and to strive for honesty and integrity in all future dealings. By freeing ourselves from the temptation to cheat, we align ourselves with the ethical and moral principles of Islam. Honesty and fairness in our actions bring peace of mind, spiritual contentment, and the trust and respect of others. This leads to a more harmonious and supportive community where everyone feels secure and valued. When we are honest and trustworthy, we invite blessings from Allah into our lives and we earn His pleasure, which is the ultimate success. Cheating is a destructive behavior that harms both the individual and the community. It erodes trust, damages relationships, and distances one from Allah's mercy. Conversely, honesty and trustworthiness are core values in Islam that build a strong, healthy, and righteous community. 3. Debt Debt is a significant concern in Islam, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized the importance of avoiding unnecessary debt and managing one's finances responsibly. Debt, while sometimes necessary, can become a heavy burden that affects a person's peace of mind, spiritual well-being, and overall quality of life. Islam encourages its followers to live within their means, to avoid borrowing more than they can repay, and to seek financial stability through lawful, halal means. The guidance on managing debt is deeply rooted in the principles of fairness, responsibility, and consideration for others. The concept of debt is not merely a financial transaction, it also has a moral and ethical dimension. Taking on debt creates a responsibility towards the lender, and it is a serious commitment that must be honored. The Quran and Hadith stress the importance of repaying debts promptly and not delaying repayment without a valid reason. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the best among you are those who are best in repaying debts. This highlights that fulfilling financial obligations is not just about money. It reflects one's integrity, trustworthiness, and adherence to Islamic principles. Debt can have significant spiritual consequences. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, often sought refuge with Allah from the burden of debt as it can lead to anxiety, stress, and a sense of being overwhelmed. In a well-known supplication, the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed, O Allah, I seek refuge with you from sin and heavy debt. When asked why he prayed so often for protection from debt, he explained that debt can lead a person to lie and break promises, behaviors that are detrimental to one's faith and moral character. This shows how debt, if not managed properly, can lead to other sinful behaviors, distancing a person from the path of righteousness. Excessive debt 
can lead to a cycle of financial instability where a person borrows more and more, eventually leading to a situation where they cannot repay what they owe. This can result in significant stress, strained relationships, and even legal consequences. In some cases, people may resort to dishonest means to manage their debts, further compounding their problems. This cycle can be incredibly damaging, not only to the individual, but also to their family and community, as financial difficulties often lead to social and emotional strain. Islamic teachings encourage believers to seek financial independence and self-sufficiency. This involves planning one's finances carefully, spending within one's means, and saving for the future. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, encouraged moderation in spending, advising against extravagance and wastefulness. Living a simple and modest life helps prevent the need for unnecessary debt and allows a person to focus on what truly matters, spiritual growth, family and community. The concept of contentment is central to this, teaching us to be satisfied with what Allah has provided and to avoid the temptations of materialism that often lead to debt. When debt is necessary, such as for education, healthcare or purchasing a home, Islam provides clear guidance on how it should be managed. Firstly, one should only take on as much debt as they are confident they can repay. It is important to avoid interest, riba, which is prohibited in Islam as it can lead to financial exploitation and further debt. Instead, Muslims are encouraged to seek interest-free loans or use Islamic financial products that comply with Sharia law. This ensures that the transaction is fair and ethical, protecting both the borrower and the lender from harm. Repaying debts should be a priority for anyone who has borrowed money. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized the seriousness of debt stating that the soul of a believer remains suspended until their debt is paid off. This means that even after death, a person's debt can affect their standing in the hereafter. Therefore, it is crucial to make sincere efforts to repay debts as quickly as possible. If one is unable to repay due to genuine hardship, Islam encourages them to communicate openly with the lender, seek an extension, or negotiate a fair settlement. The lender, in turn, is encouraged to show compassion and understanding, possibly even forgiving the debt if the borrower is truly in need. In addition to the financial and spiritual responsibilities associated with debt, there is also a social dimension. Islam teaches that we should not burden others with our financial problems, especially when it comes to debt. This means being cautious about borrowing from friends and family as it can strain relationships and lead to tension. When borrowing is unavoidable, it should be done with full transparency and a clear plan for repayment. Moreover, Islam encourages the community to support those in financial difficulty through charity, sadaqa, and interest-free loans, Qad Hassan. Helping someone avoid or repay debt is considered a noble act that brings great reward. Islam also places great emphasis on the importance of making dua, supplication, and seeking Allah's help in managing finances and repaying debts. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught several supplications specifically for seeking relief from debt, showing that reliance on Allah is central to overcoming financial challenges. These prayers not only provide spiritual comfort, but also remind us that ultimately, all sustenance and provision come from Allah. By turning to Allah in times of financial difficulty, a person strengthens their faith and trust in His wisdom and mercy. Debt should be approached with a sense of responsibility and a commitment to living within the boundaries set by Islam. By avoiding unnecessary debt, living modestly, and being diligent in repaying what we owe, we can maintain financial stability and peace of mind. This approach allows us to focus on our spiritual obligations 
build stronger relationships and contribute positively to our communities. Moreover, by managing debt responsibly, we protect ourselves from the negative consequences that can arise from financial mismanagement, ensuring that we remain on a path that pleases Allah. Debt is a serious matter in Islam, with both financial and spiritual implications. The teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, guide us to avoid unnecessary debt, live within our means, and repay what we owe promptly. By following these principles, we can achieve financial stability, maintain our integrity, and ensure that our lives are in accordance with Islamic values. Managing debt responsibly not only brings peace and fulfillment in this world, but also prepares us for success in the hereafter. By freeing ourselves from arrogance, cheating and debt, we achieve a life of integrity, peace and fulfillment. Arrogance blinds us to our faults and distances us from Allah, while humility brings us closer to Him. Cheating destroys trust and brings short-term gains but long-term losses, while honesty leads to respect and divine reward. Debt burdens us with stress and distracts us from our spiritual goals, while financial freedom allows us to live with dignity and focus on what truly matters. Embracing humility, honesty, and financial responsibility paves the way for a life that is pleasing to Allah and beneficial to both ourselves and our communities. Seek three things. One, knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge is one of the most important teachings in Islam and is highly emphasized by both the Qur'an and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Knowledge is considered a key to success in both this world and the hereafter. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, encouraged every Muslim to seek knowledge, saying, seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim. This statement highlights that acquiring knowledge is not optional, but a duty for every believer. It is a lifelong journey that benefits individuals, families, communities and society as a whole. The pursuit of knowledge is not limited to religious studies. It encompasses all forms of beneficial knowledge that help us grow as better human beings and make meaningful contributions to our world. Knowledge in Islam is seen as a guiding light. The Qur'an frequently encourages reflection, contemplation, and the quest for understanding, emphasizing the importance of learning in guiding our actions and decisions. In Surah Al-Zumar, Allah says, Are those who know equal to those who do not know? Qur'an 39.9 this verse underscores the value of knowledge and its transformative power. It empowers us to make informed choices in life, helps us distinguish between right and wrong, and guides us toward the path of righteousness. Knowledge provides us with a deeper understanding of our faith and strengthens our relationship with Allah. It enables us to perform our religious duties, such as prayer, fasting, and charity, correctly and with sincerity. By learning the Qur'an, Hadith, the sayings and practices of the Prophet, and Sirah, the life of the Prophet, we gain insights into the core values and principles of Islam, such as compassion, justice, honesty, and patience. These teachings not only shape our personal character, but also enhance our ability to contribute positively to society. The pursuit of secular knowledge, such as science, mathematics, medicine, history and ethics, is also highly valued in Islam. Islam is a comprehensive way of life, and knowledge is considered essential for addressing the complexities of the modern world and for advancing human civilization. The early Islamic civilization, known as the Golden Age of Islam, flourished because of its emphasis on a balanced approach to both religious and worldly knowledge. Muslim scholars made groundbreaking contributions to various fields, including medicine, astronomy, mathematics, and philosophy. For example, scholars like Al-Khwarizmi, known as the father of algebra, Ibn Sina, Avicenna in medicine, 
and al-Biruni in geography and astronomy laid the foundations for many modern sciences. Their thirst for knowledge and their commitment to integrating both spiritual and scientific learning led to innovations that benefited humanity as a whole. This historical example shows that Islam encourages a holistic approach to learning that integrates both spiritual and practical aspects of knowledge. Seeking knowledge also nurtures humility and a continuous quest for personal and intellectual growth. The more we learn, the more we realize how vast the universe is and how little we actually know. This realization fosters humility, a key virtue in Islam. It reminds us that all knowledge ultimately comes from Allah and we are merely students in His vast creation. Humility in knowledge opens our minds and hearts to new ideas, perspectives and understandings, allowing us to better appreciate the diversity of Allah's creation. It makes us more empathetic, tolerant and respectful toward others, recognizing that wisdom and insight can come from various sources and experiences. When we approach knowledge with humility, we become more receptive to learning from different cultures, histories and traditions, enriching our own understanding of the world. True knowledge leads to wisdom, and wisdom guides us toward piety and righteousness. Knowledge that is rooted in sincerity and good intentions leads to spiritual growth and a closer relationship with Allah. It teaches us to reflect on our purpose in life our responsibilities toward others, and our duties to our Creator. Wisdom derived from knowledge helps us navigate life's challenges with patience, gratitude, and trust in Allah's plan. It empowers us to make choices that align with our faith and values, ensuring that our actions contribute to a better world and bring us closer to achieving our ultimate goal, pleasing Allah. The pursuit of knowledge should be a lifelong endeavor for every Muslim. It is not something to be sought once and then forgotten. Rather, it is a continuous process of learning, reflection and application. 2. Manners Good manners, or akhlaq, are fundamental in Islam and are considered a reflection of a person's faith and inner character. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was known for his exemplary manners, and he emphasized their importance throughout his life. He said, The best among you are those who have the best manners and character, Bukhari. This highlights that good manners are not just a social nicety, they are a core part of being a good Muslim. Manners in Islam go beyond simple etiquette, they encompass how we treat others, how we speak, behave, and even how we think. Good manners are about embodying the values of Islam in our daily interactions and showing kindness, respect, humility and empathy toward everyone, whether they are family, friends, neighbors or even strangers. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself was a model of perfect manners. His kindness, patience, honesty and gentleness won the hearts of many, including his fiercest enemies. He demonstrated that good manners are a powerful way to convey the message of Islam and to build trust and strong relationships. For example, he was known for his practice of always greeting people with a smile, speaking kindly and never raising his voice in anger. Even when people were harsh or rude to him, he responded with patience and forgiveness. This level of character is what Islam aims to cultivate in every believer. In one hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Nothing is heavier on the scale of deeds than one's good manners, Tirmidhi, indicating that good character is among the most valuable assets a person can have. Good manners in Islam are comprehensive and cover various aspects of life. They include being truthful and honest in speech, showing gratitude for even the smallest favors, being generous with others, respecting elders, showing love and kindness to the young, maintaining ties of kinship, being humble and forgiving those who have wronged us. For instance, the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught that smiling at your brother is a charity, reflecting how even small, everyday actions 
can have a big impact when done with sincerity. Good manners also extend to how we handle disputes and disagreements. Islam encourages Muslims to resolve conflicts peacefully, avoid backbiting and slander, and refrain from harsh words that could hurt others. Good manners are essential in building a strong, cohesive and harmonious community. When people practice good manners, they create an environment of mutual respect, understanding and support. This fosters a sense of unity and brotherhood, which is crucial for the well-being of any community. For example, the Islamic concept of Ihsan, which means doing good and striving for excellence, encourages believers to not only fulfill their obligations, but to go above and beyond in treating others with kindness and compassion. A society where people practice good manners is more likely to be peaceful, prosperous, and blessed by Allah. Good manners also have a significant impact on dawah, the act of inviting others to Islam. When Muslims display good manners, they naturally attract others to the beauty of Islam. Many people in history have been inspired to embrace Islam after witnessing the exemplary conduct of Muslims in their everyday lives. This is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, emphasized that Muslims should be the best in character, as it is a reflection of their faith and a form of silent yet powerful invitation to Islam. Good manners lead to personal growth and self-improvement. They help us develop qualities like patience, empathy and humility. For example, showing patience in difficult situations not only prevents conflicts but also builds inner strength and self-control. Similarly, being humble allows us to acknowledge our limitations, learn from others, and grow as individuals. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Whoever humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah will raise him in status. Muslim This shows that good manners are not only about treating others well, but also about nurturing our own spiritual and personal development. In Islam, good manners are a reflection of our inner faith and a sign of a true believer. They are not just outward behaviors, but a manifestation of our beliefs, values, and connection to Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent to perfect good character, and as his followers, it is our duty to strive to embody the same qualities. By cultivating good manners, we not only improve ourselves, but also contribute to a better society and a more peaceful world. Good manners make us beloved to Allah, respected by people, and successful in both this life and the hereafter. Good manners are essential in Islam as they embody the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and reflect the beauty of our faith. They help us build strong relationships, foster a positive community, and grow closer to Allah. As Muslims, we should strive to adopt the best manners in all aspects of our lives, knowing that they are a key to success and a means of attaining the pleasure of Allah. By seeking knowledge, good manners and piety, we enrich our lives and come closer to Allah. Knowledge illuminates the path of righteousness and empowers us to make wise decisions. Good manners build strong communities and reflect the beauty of our faith. Piety, or taqwa, keeps us mindful of our purpose and helps us stay connected to Allah in all aspects of our lives. Together, these three qualities lay the foundation for a successful and fulfilling life, both in this world and the hereafter. Remember three things. 1. Death Remembering death is one of the most powerful and profound practices in Islam. It serves as a constant reminder to believers of the temporary and fleeting nature of this worldly life. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, advised Muslims to frequently remember death, referring to it as the destroyer of pleasures. This statement emphasizes that death puts an end to all the pleasures, desires and attachments of this world. By contemplating death regularly, we remind ourselves that our time on earth is short and that our ultimate purpose is not to chase worldly gains, but to prepare for the hereafter. 
The inevitability of death is a reality that every soul will face, regardless of status, wealth or power. Reflecting on this certainty helps us focus on what truly matters, our relationship with Allah, our good deeds, and our preparation for the life to come. When we keep death in mind, it diminishes our attachment to worldly pleasures and possessions. We begin to see life from a different perspective, understanding that material wealth, social status and worldly power are all temporary and will not benefit us in the hereafter unless they are used for righteous purposes. This awareness encourages us to live more modestly, to be content with what Allah has provided us and to focus our efforts on actions that bring us closer to Him. It helps us avoid becoming overly attached to things that are fleeting and instead prioritize spiritual growth and good deeds. The thought of death also compels us to let go of grudges, forgive more easily, and treat people with kindness and compassion. We never know when our time or the time of others will come, so it is wise to live without harboring ill feelings or regrets. This mindset cultivates humility, sincerity, and a sense of urgency to continuously do good, seek forgiveness for our mistakes, and strive for self-improvement in all aspects of our lives. The Islamic concept of remembering death is not meant to instill fear or anxiety. Rather, it provides clarity, direction and purpose. It is a tool to help us remain mindful of our limited time on earth and to make the best use of it by aligning our actions with the teachings of Islam. Preparing for death means living a life that reflects Islamic values, performing our daily prayers with sincerity, engaging in acts of charity to help those in need, seeking beneficial knowledge, treating others with respect, and constantly seeking Allah's guidance and forgiveness. It involves being mindful of our intentions, ensuring that our actions are pleasing to Allah and avoiding sins that could harm our spiritual standing. This preparation is not about fear, but about hope and the desire to meet Allah with a clean heart and a record filled with good deeds. Remembering death frequently helps us stay focused on our spiritual goals and prevents us from being distracted by the temporary glitter and glamour of this world. It is a form of spiritual discipline and mindfulness that aligns our hearts and minds with the ultimate reality of our existence, that we are all returning to Allah. This practice motivates us to live each day with a sense of purpose, making the most of every moment and striving to earn the eternal pleasure of Allah. It reminds us that every action counts and that we should strive to leave a positive impact, seek forgiveness for our shortcomings, and be grateful for the time we have. By keeping death in our thoughts, we are more likely to live a balanced life that fulfills our duties to Allah, to ourselves, and to others, ultimately leading to success in both this world and the hereafter. Remembering death serves as a catalyst for repentance and purification, Knowing that our time on earth is limited pushes us to hasten in seeking Allah's forgiveness and mending any wrongs we may have committed, whether it be towards Allah or other people. It helps us to purify our hearts from envy, hatred or arrogance, replacing these negative traits with compassion, generosity and humility. This act of constant self-reflection and accountability fosters a deeper connection with Allah as we become more aware of our actions and their consequences in the hereafter. Contemplating death regularly can strengthen our resilience and patience during trials and hardships. When we are aware that this life is a test and that difficulties are part of our journey back to Allah, we are better equipped to handle them with patience and trust in Allah's wisdom. It reminds us that no matter how tough life gets, it is temporary and better awaits in the hereafter for those who remain steadfast. Remembering death thus becomes a source of inner strength, helping us to maintain a positive outlook and stay committed to our faith through all circumstances. 2. Favors. Others helping you. 
Gratitude is a fundamental principle in Islam and remembering the favors others have done for us is a key aspect of living a thankful life. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized that showing gratitude is not only an acknowledgement of Allah's blessings, but also a recognition of the kindness and support we receive from those around us. He said, He who does not thank people does not thank Allah. Tirmidhi. This hadith highlights the importance of being appreciative toward those who help us. It is a reminder that every act of kindness, whether big or small, deserves recognition and that being grateful is a way to show respect and love for others. Gratitude fosters a sense of humility, reminding us that we are not self-sufficient and that our journey in life is made easier through the help and support of others. Remembering the favors done for us by others creates a strong foundation for healthy relationships and a compassionate community. When we are mindful of the kindness we receive from others, be it from parents who raised us, friends who stood by us in tough times, teachers who guided us or strangers who helped us unexpectedly, it deepens our sense of empathy and reciprocity. This gratitude encourages us to reciprocate by being kind and helpful in return, thus creating a cycle of goodwill and positivity. Acknowledging favors can be done through simple acts like saying thank you, offering a heartfelt prayer for the person, or extending help when they need it. These acts of recognition not only strengthen our bonds, but also foster a spirit of unity and cooperation within the community. Remembering favors also guards against feelings of entitlement and arrogance. It teaches us that no one is obliged to help us and that every act of kindness is a gift that should not be taken for granted. This awareness makes us more appreciative and content, reducing feelings of envy or resentment when others succeed or receive blessings. When we focus on the good that others have done for us, we are less likely to dwell on negativity or harbor ill feelings. Instead, we are inspired to be better individuals, to contribute positively to the lives of others and to spread kindness. Gratitude for favors also aligns us with the teachings of Islam, which promotes humility, empathy, and a sense of community well-being. In doing so, we build a life based on gratitude, love, and mutual respect, which is beloved to Allah and beneficial to all. Recognizing and appreciating favors from others is a reflection of our acknowledgement of Allah's wisdom and His way of providing help through His creation. Sometimes, Allah answers our prayers and provides support through the people He places in our lives. Therefore, when we thank people, we are also thanking Allah for sending them our way. By keeping this perspective, we enhance our sense of gratitude both to the Creator and His creation. This holistic approach to gratitude helps us maintain a positive outlook, even in challenging situations, because we learn to see the good in all circumstances and appreciate the divine plan behind every favor we receive. This comprehensive practice of gratitude brings immense peace to our hearts, builds stronger, more meaningful connections, and leads to a more content and spiritually fulfilled life. Remembering the favors of others encourages us to avoid ingratitude, which is highly discouraged in Islam. Ingratitude not only makes us forget the blessings we have, but also hardens our hearts and creates a sense of dissatisfaction. By actively remembering and acknowledging the good others do for us, we develop a positive mindset and a heart that is always open to seeing the beauty in others' actions. This positivity spreads within our communities, fostering an environment where people feel valued, appreciated, and encouraged to help one another. Gratitude for favors builds a sense of accountability and moral responsibility. When we are grateful for what others have done for us, we feel more inclined to pass on kindness and be there for others in their time of need. This is particularly important in building a supportive society where people do not live in isolation 
but are interconnected through acts of kindness, service and compassion. In essence, gratitude for favors is a reminder of our shared humanity and our duty to uplift one another. Remembering the favors others do for us can also have profound effects on our personal growth. It teaches us humility by recognizing that we are not superior and that we all depend on each other in different ways. It makes us more patient, understanding and willing to forgive, knowing that we too have received help when we needed it. This sense of interconnectedness creates a ripple effect of positivity and generosity, encouraging a culture of mutual respect, love and continuous support within our communities. Three. Good advice. In Islam, good advice or nasiha holds a special place as an essential part of the faith. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stated, The religion is nasiha, sincere advice, Muslim, highlighting its significance in guiding believers toward righteousness and away from harm. Good advice is an act of care and compassion that reflects a genuine desire to help others improve, avoid mistakes, and make wise decisions. It serves as a means of maintaining a strong and healthy community where members support one another in staying true to Islamic teachings and principles. Accepting and giving good advice are both signs of humility, sincerity, and a commitment to collective well-being. Remembering good advice is crucial for personal growth and spiritual development. When someone gives us advice, especially from a place of sincerity and wisdom, it often comes from their own experiences, knowledge and concern for our well-being. Good advice can be a guiding light during difficult times, helping us navigate challenges, make informed decisions and stay on the path of righteousness. For instance, advice on maintaining patience in adversity, trusting in Allah's plan, or staying away from harmful habits can be pivotal in moments of doubt or struggle. Such guidance helps us align our actions with our faith and maintain our spiritual and moral integrity. Receiving good advice requires an open mind and a humble heart. It takes humility to accept that we may not know everything or that our perspective might be limited. A person who values good advice understands that others may see things differently or have more experience, which can provide a clearer, more objective view of a situation. This humility is key to self-improvement as it allows us to learn from others and avoid repeating mistakes. In Islam, this willingness to learn from good advice is viewed as wisdom. The Qur'an itself advises believers to consult with one another and seek counsel in matters of importance, emphasizing the value of collective wisdom and shared knowledge. Giving good advice is equally important and should be done with the intention of genuinely helping the other person. Islam teaches that advice should be delivered kindly, respectfully and privately, without embarrassment or judgment. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, exemplified this approach in his dealings with people, always providing guidance in a way that was gentle, empathetic and motivating. When offering advice, we should be mindful to speak in a manner that encourages rather than discourages, that uplifts rather than belittles. Good advice given with kindness can inspire change and growth, while harsh or poorly timed advice can have the opposite effect leading to resentment or stubbornness. Remembering good advice also helps us stay grounded and connected to our values. It serves as a mental and spiritual reminder that we are not alone in our journey and that others have gone through similar challenges and learned valuable lessons that can benefit us. When we recall the advice given to us by parents, teachers, friends or elders, it often provides us with the clarity and perspective needed to face our own trials with wisdom and patience. This sense of connection through shared advice creates a supportive community where people help each other grow and thrive. 
The practice of remembering and valuing good advice also cultivates a culture of continuous learning and mutual respect, which is essential for both personal and communal development. Remembering good advice encourages us to implement it in our lives, transforming words into action. For instance, if we receive advice about the importance of regular prayer, gratitude or forgiveness, reflecting on this advice should lead us to incorporate these practices into our daily lives. This transformation from mere knowledge to action is what truly benefits a believer and aligns them with the teachings of Islam. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The best among you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Bukhari. This hadith reflects the cycle of learning, applying and sharing knowledge and advice that benefits everyone. Remembering good advice also teaches us to be wise in seeking advice. We learn to turn to those who are knowledgeable, trustworthy and have our best interests at heart. Seeking advice from such individuals ensures that we receive guidance that is beneficial and rooted in Islamic teachings. This discernment in whom we choose to seek advice from also reflects our commitment to living a life that is pleasing to Allah and guided by wisdom. It helps us avoid the pitfalls of misguided advice that could lead us astray or cause harm. When we remember and cherish good advice, we also become more capable of giving it ourselves. By recognizing the impact that good advice has had on our lives, we are motivated to pass on that guidance to others. It creates a cycle of continuous support, growth and improvement within the community. We are encouraged to become a source of positive influence, providing counsel that helps others succeed, avoid mistakes and draw closer to Allah. This creates a virtuous cycle where everyone benefits and the community as a whole becomes stronger and more unified in its values and goals. Remembering and acting on good advice not only benefits us in this world, but also in the hereafter. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized the importance of guiding others toward goodness, stating that whoever guides someone to goodness will have a reward like the one who does it, Muslim. Therefore, giving and receiving good advice is a means of earning continuous rewards from Allah as it contributes to the well-being of others and the community at large. It is an act of charity that keeps giving, strengthening bonds and fostering a sense of shared purpose and unity among believers. By valuing good advice, we align ourselves with the prophetic tradition and strive to lead lives filled with wisdom, compassion and integrity, ultimately seeking the pleasure of Allah. These eight pieces of advice from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are a guide to a fulfilling and righteous life. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe for more content. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.